Okay, welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the predicament of once we add a blueprint to the object, the object can no longer move, making it kind of a weak obstacle. So let's go ahead and remedy that. Uh, to do that, we're going to just use a sphere as an example. So I'm just going to drag in a sphere. This sphere, I'm going to have kind of walk up, up and down the steps. And like I did before, we're not going to actually use this sphere. We're going to go to Browse to Asset, identif identify the sphere, and then right click, duplicate it, and call it, uh, let's just call it moving target or something. Even though it's not really a moving target, that's fine. And then I'm going to scrap this sphere and drop in the new one. Okay. So now that we have that sphere in place, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to add to blueprint at the very start. So we're not going to actually make the object move first. Instead, we're going to set up the object first with its box collision and with its blueprints. And then after that, we're going to make it move up and down the stairs. So I'm going to go to add blueprints, press create blueprint. It's going to create that. And then just like we did for the other enemies, go to add component go over to box collision, have that selected. The box, as you can tell, is pretty small. And actually, if I'm doing a sphere, then I should probably not do a box collision, but do a sphere collision. Okay, and uh, I'm just gonna select the sphere and rename it and call it hitbox. And then I'm going to scale it. And that's odd, my scaling key isn't working. Uh, let me move it out of the object first. Oh, now it works perfectly fine. Okay, so scale it. If I wanted to take the time, I could make it like a perfect fit. But for now, I'm just going to get a nice close fit like that. Okay, and, and now we're going to go ahead and scroll to the bottom just like we did for the previous enemy and it's on a component begin overlap and I'm going to select that and then go over to the event graph okay so this is just a good rehash if you've forgotten what you have to do to make an enemy hurt you you can pause the video and try to do it without me if you'd like uh, but uh, we need to cast to third person character and that's going to be the object itself whereas you uh, are the player character. So we're going to get the player character. Oh, wait, you're, <laughs> you are the other actor. So, yep, get that set up. And then when it collides, you're going to get your health, which, you know, everything's been programmed in this one, so I know it's going to work. Get health. And then we're going to do minus float, float minus float. Let's just do one, which means it would immediately kill you. That's 100% of your health. And then I'm going to grab off the blue, drag it over here, and go to set health. Okay. And then reset our health. So now, now we just lose 100% of our health. I'm going to compile that. And that looks like it's going to run. So let's go ahead and see. I'm going to go to play, run into the object. Okay. And... It's not killing me, so hopefully I haven't lost my event tick. Health is less than zero. Do once. And of course, uh, what I did wrong is I forgot in the program itself to connect that over to set. Okay, so it, w it wasn't running that, but now let's compile that and run it. And when I run into the object, You'll notice I insta die and just respawn. I disabled my death screen for the time being, so I just know that it, it essentially kills my character. Okay, and now let's go ahead and with since it's all bound together now, now we can kind of move the object. So we'll have the object selected and it will select the the box, the collision box as well. And now when we set it to movable, it will have both things as movable, whereas before it was only the object itself. Then we're just going to go over to cinematics. Uh, we can just use the matinee actor for your other one. So since we already have it, we can go over to platform one, 
right click on it and actually let's go ahead and select our actor first right click on it go to actors and just go add selected actors okay and then let's also right click on it and add in a new movement track okay so we have a second movement track now and I've never actually tried it with two movement tracks but in theory it should work the same so let's go ahead and I'm gonna go over to the one second mark and I'm going to take the object and just move it up the steps like that and I'm gonna add a key then at the two second mark let's go up here I'm gonna move the object to over here and add a key and then let's go to maybe two and a half seconds I think that's reasonable and move the object straight down this path and add a key and I'm also going to select the first one because I forgot to do that back when it was in its original position and I'm going to go to control W to create a copy of it hold down control hold down the left click and drag that to the to the end so that's the restart okay and let's just go ahead and hit loop see what happens so you can see how the enemy travels and yeah <laughs> okay that it, it takes the shortest path available so I guess I'd have to create some more keyframes if I didn't want it to essentially be messing up over there okay so I think that will work uh, let's go ahead and close out of that and Let's see if I hit play what will happen. Cool. So it's still using the old matinee. So now the object kind of moves, but now I could use that in my game. So it's now an object that moves around and when it hits you, you die. Okay, so that's going to conclude this video. In the next video, we're going to take this even further, uh, hopefully by adding some textures and so on and so forth to these objects. Okay, so I'll see you in the next